All right, today we're going to do a little bit on troubleshooting with your meter. Uh, the, what I have in front of us is an electric heat system. There is no outdoor unit. It is simply the air handler with the electric heat kit installed. We're going to do a troubleshooting technique called hopscotch. And uh, I'm going to walk you through how to do that. So first things first, I'm going to turn on my heat strips. You're going to hear the contactor engage and we should have our elements on and the fan on at the same time. All right, there goes our heating elements. Uh, simple amp draw. And you can see down there at the bottom, we've got about 17 and a half amps on that one heating element. This is a simple 5KW heat strip. Uh, if I were to check the amp draw on the fan, um, you're looking at about, you know, almost one amp. So the heating element and the fan are on. And I had this stu uh, student ask a question the other day about how to troubleshoot and follow the readings on your meter. So that's what I'm going to walk you through right quick uh, with this. So I'm going to put my voltmeter over in the corner. Uh, you can see the I've got zero volts on it. So in these new air handlers with the heating kits uh, installed, we have a contactor that is taking the place of our traditional terminal block. So down here at the bottom, you'll see my high voltage wires come in and they'll plug to the inlet side of this contactor. So I'm going to do a volt reading here on L1 and L2 and you can see that I've got right at 210 volts, which is pretty standard for what we have uh, at the shop. So hopscotch troubleshooting is very simple. Okay, We're going to leave one lead stationary and we're going to move the other one. Okay, So what I'm going to do is with my right hand I'm going to come down here on the terminal labeled L2. This is the underside of the contactor and what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow all right now I just did voltage check here and you can see that I've got 209 point you know point six point seven what have you with this method of troubleshooting you leave one lead still uh, say on the terminal block and the other one you can follow the circuit all the way through so if my contactor switch was closed but not passing power I could check power here I get the full voltage 210 we'll say and then I can follow that switch straight across and I should get 210. If the contactor switch is closed, then it should pass all power. So you can see here that I did get that reading. If you're ever in a situation where it got zero, if you have power going in the switch and not power passing through, you know, it's safe to say that that switch is bad. So with the hopscotch method, you simply follow the circuit. So I can go from here at the contactor and I can go in to my, my first safety, my high temperature limit. I can, I've got 210 volts going in and if that safety was the problem I would have zero coming out but I've got 210 so I've got power going in the switch power coming out of the switch okay this little brass looking clip right here this once it leaves the high limit it's going to go into our heating element so I can touch right here and you can see I've got 210 volts right I've got full power going in when it goes all the way through, you know, loops around with the coil, it's gonna come out over here. So I can look here, oh, it's, it's zero. Does that mean that I don't have a good element? Well, of course not. We just checked it with an amp meter and we were pulling almost 18 amps. We're now, since we're after the load, we're on the other side of power, okay? So what I'll do now is I'll come down here and I'll put my lead back on L1, L2, and you can see that I've got 210. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow with the other side and I can finish tracing. And this, this here is power going into my fusible link, 209 volts, all right? I should have that same reading coming out, and it is. So in this real simple method of troubleshooting, you leave one lead stationary on one side of power and you follow the other side in and out of safeties up to the point of the load. For my electric heater, this this is my heater strip right here. Th these two uh, ceramic blocks right here. 
that is the beginning end of my electric heater strip. So you can see here that I've got the full voltage going to it. And of course, we've already done the amp draw, so everything is good. All right. We could do the same thing if we were to follow our blower. Okay. Because all power comes off of this terminal block, I could sit here with my meter and do the same checks, power going in and out of my relay up to my blower motor or a transformer, or a second heat strip, or a compressor. Uh, you just, it's hopping around, but you have to remember to leave one lead stationary and move the other one. So, I hope this helps. Uh, it's fairly easy to, to, to get. Uh, once you find the problem, you know, voltage going in a high limit per se, per se. Um, if it goes in and does not come out, that's when you need to turn the power off, right? and then we can simply remove a wire, right? We can remove both of these wires going to that particular safety. We can put our meter on continuity, make sure it beeps, and then we can actually ohm it out and tell, you know, verify if that uh, is in fact a open or closed safety switch. So that's it, it can be that easy. If you have any questions, let me know.